discussing in the due course of time. So let us start. Okay. Uh, so uh, what we are going to learn? So I am discussing this topic as if uh, what a faculty should do in order to achieve an outcome-based education. So how we should, uh, uh, how we can inculcate that habit? The first thing we should have is to have a learning objective or goal. A student and the teachers should have a connecting point. The connecting point is the learning objective. The learning objective is the bridge which enables the students to understand like what they are going to learn from a particular topic. Let it be a topic for today. It will not be compare, compiling the whole syllabus or whole chapter. But today's topic I have prepared being a teacher of certain objective that has to be fulfilled. And this message has to be reached to the students. So that's what we call it as a learning objective. So what is our today's learning objective is to understand the basic terminologies related to OBE in light of NAC and NB accreditation. Next, applying the concept of Bloom taxonomy in developing the COs. And of course, the main part or chunk of it is assessing the utility of collaborative approach. That is a new thing. Uh, if we remember who have done the NAC last time, uh, they have used one term called Eastern approach. Now, I have some, uh, what do you call, this Eastern and Western approaches, these terms are quite contradictory lot of cases I will discuss but anyhow we have something called Eastern approach in combination with the Western approach so uh, it's a hybridization you can say uh, to get a total outcome based education so OBE we are actually uh, what we are targeting is not just OBE it's a total OBE um, so I will just ask you uh, if you can just just yes or no, that will be sufficient for me. Uh, like, uh, do you know Institute Vision? Anyone? I think it has been changed now. Okay. Uh, do you know Mission? Have you seen any time? Okay. PO, Program Education Objective. Uh, PO, maybe you have seen because uh, we have prepared the COs and the POs and it has been uploaded in our website. So probably you may know about this PO. There are 12 POs, Madam told just now. And CO probably uh, you know it. You have prepared or you have gone through it. Uh, so this, uh, these are the primary aspects uh, which we should know and uh, even the NBA or the NAC auditors will es expect us to know. Basically, this CO, PO, PEO, uh, these are mainly restricted to the NBA, but it has been seen this time that uh, even the NAC is also moving towards the concept of COs and the POs. So probably it is better, uh, we are preparing for NAC, why not, uh, NBA, why not to keep the same thing for the NAC also, it will not be a bad thing for us. The new thing which I am adding up over here for today's topic is LO. Probably will not get this LO anywhere, but this is the very primary thing of achieving this course of uh, journey for outcome based education. So it starts from LO, learning objective. Each class is important. Each class is the connecting points which you join together, it gives the total CO. So uh, when you say a CEO to wholly, it may be confusing for a student, student, but when you discuss in terms of learning objectives each day, like today I'm going to take so and so, so and so topics, by the end uh, you will achieve some knowledge which is measurable. How we measure? There are some probing of measurement that we do in terms of CS. That is not a thing like always we should depend on CS, no. We may even take our own assessments. It may be a surprise test. It may be a, a what do you call a internal a, like a sub, a class test. And those probings will justify how much the student has learned. No need. At the end of the class, just have an open discussion and forum. And you can 
come to a conclusion whether the students have learned or not that's a way so that you will come to know that okay the today's class has given some outcome like students has understood the topic and moreover what happens the students will be more free to come with their doubts during the course of discussion so elo is the very important the primary thing for discussion so let us start off one by one okay like mostly uh, you are knowing these terms mission vision po po so do you have any idea of what how you define it can you learn how it is different from mission the basic thing is that what i have said in the vision and mission in case of vision we have to prepare the students so that they can face any kind of uh, uh, situations it can be dynamic they have an ability to face any kind of situation of that and in case of mission we have to prepare them in such a way so that they can absorb in anywhere with the skill that is the basic thing what research everything preparation uh, know about the course everything is fine both lines are sentences are there what i have gathered but basic thing what i have the difference i have seen in case of mission whenever a student will come out from this institution he or she must have that kind of skill so that he can absorb somewhere and in case of vision any obstacles will come then by the application of the uh, subject he can overcome the obstacle okay so anyhow we have got some informations uh, rather than going for introspection i am just going to another topic that is uh, mission vision next is pu program education objective if uh, raja sir is saying what he said that uh, how the students will be performing over beyond your course after completing the course is something is re related or relevant to your mission and vision then what will you define as peo that is program education objective anyone see this is this this is not like a uh, why one sided this monologue discussion is very clumsy better sir vision is uh, how i see after or what i want to do mission is how i am doing it yeah and, somewhat and p yes. is for pharmacy if i take the example what is the objective of studying pharmacy education? yeah almost madam has almost uh, hit that uh, bullseye so i'm just go for it uh, So first, start with a vision. Vision means the perspective. Uh, so vision means something you forecast. Is something you are forecasting. Futuristic statement that institutions would like to achieve over a long period of time. So what you expect your it's in a layman manner what you expect your students to be after twenty five years. or 20 years where you want your students to be placed and see these institutions outcome so that's the vision it's a very long term goal it's a very long term goal okay so if i go to our new vision as vision and mission has been changed as per the proposal of uh, nb okay nb has asked for upgradation so as per that we have gone for changing uh, sir has helped us a lot so as per that i will just hit upon the primary words which will help you to understand the thing no need to uh, copy this vision and mission i am not going to ask for the mcqs is not possible so please rather than uh, going to the writing the vision and mission you can get it outside i am just putting the small small uh, areas where you have to concentrate like you see uh, in this what is states who have object of pharmacy like the students who are opting for pharmacy what we expect that a skilled pharmaceutical human resource should be developed and which will meet the dynamic challenges of pharmaceutical industry hospital pharmacy regulatory affairs under the uh, statutory organization of government private sectors pharmaceutical entrepreneurship and all relevant healthcare sectors to serve the society with a lifelong commitment of professional ethics i just forgot the in initial like uh, porosity and pension for research that is uh, growing in the field of research it means so these are the expectations from our students in long run so that's the vision of a 
institute it's a long term goal secondly as uh, madam told how to accomplish a vision how to achieve a vision how to reach to a vision is something we call it as a mission uh, so it says the proposes to move towards the stated vision how will we move towards the stated vision so as we get it we call it as a mission so as we have i'm just reading it out to produce highly so how will you achieve a highly competent man force for the humankind service to produce how to uh, by producing a high skilled pharmacy human resource with continued academic ferocity and pension for research with commitment for concept of lifelong learning to min to meet the dynamic requirements of the ever expanding pharmaceutical industries hospital pharmacies pharmaceutical entrepreneurship services under the government and all other relevant health sectors as an important member of healthcare team with a lifelong commitment to uphold dignity of profession and professional ethics commensuration of professional of pharmacy with emphasis on quality health uh, care services in respective area of service so this is the way of path or the way, track on which we are going to work in order to uh, reach our uh, vision next comes accomplishment of the mission so this is your mission you know the road you know what's your goal now how you are going to reach to the uh, road is uh, what we are calling it as peo the objectives there should be some definite objectives which should be fulfilled where will be fulfilling who will be fulfilling your program will be fulfilling which is our program pharmacy is our program so undergraduate b pharmacy program should uh, fulfill some demands after that demands are fulfilled then only we can say that we are walking in track that is what is the immediate requirement we expect from a graduates after they pass the b pharm exam that that's what we call it as a program education objective so these are some of them like pursuing higher studies in indian abroad that's the one of them you know that when we go for uh, your placement uh, related documentations we find that we give higher studies as well as your uh, placement so pursuing higher studies is also one of the goal after your ug next uh, imbibing the knowledge uh, that is related to the industry or the pharmaceutical industry next another sector is your hospital pharmacy clinical pharmacy pharmacovigilance community pharmacy the clinical area next of course regulatory uh, or regulatory uh, sector government sectors related to drug control administration scientific officers government analyst healthcare service under the government private organizations so these are related to the regulatory aspect and lastly opting for teaching as a profession so these are the immediate uh, expectations immediate uh, openings which will make us to work towards our mission that will lead to the vision so this is what we call it as program education objectives so so to achieve the primary qualities that has to be fulfilled during uh, fulfillment of program education objective it demands something from your program in order to be working in a industry or hospital or your uh, regulatory uh, agencies or as a faculty or a teacher it requires some basic uh criteria that has to be fulfilled from the program your b pharm program so this we call it as program objectives or pos these are called as the program objectives or pos so the program objective or pos what we mean is what the graduates are expected to perform and achieve during or at the moment of graduation and all and this is also known as graduate attributes so uh, during the total 4 years 
what the students should be aided or should be having during the passing of or graduation of the particular program we call it as the program objectives now these program objectives are madam told like there are 11 to 12 program objectives that are present so these program objectives are classified into two types there are two classification heads for these program objectives one we call it as program specific objectives another is program non specific objectives so these are the two things we should remember firstly uh, program specific objectives are certain things like is it those program objectives which can be transferred imbibed with the influence of the course which you can transfer to the students directly as a textual or theoretical or practical aspect of knowledge that's called as your program specific objectives or pso uh next we have something called as program non specific objectives uh that is realizing the self realizing qualities now just to have a knowledge and to execute a knowledge it's a wide difference for having a knowledge you can have books you can have uh, practical classes you can search anything you can have a course but to apply the knowledge you need lot of extra qualities beyond the theoretical aspect so that's what we call it as program non specific objectives or outcomes so let me go for this pso that is program specific objectives we have this four program specific objectives according to the nda that is pharmacy knowledge next planning abilities thirdly problem analysis and modern tool usage these are the actually the program specific objectives here to gain this knowledge you need to have practical classes you need to have theoretical classes uh to gain this knowledge obviously we have a measurable probing system that is examinations like cs or class test or practical exams somehow we can analyze this and we can say that okay so and so students are capable of having so knowledge or the program objective at the end of four years but uh if you go for the program non specific objectives this includes leadership skill professional identity pharmaceutical ethics communication pharmacists and society environmental sustainability and lifelong learning this you cannot directly inject inside the student in terms of uh, a theory class or a practical class or even exams it has to be imbibed during the process of imbibation of program specific objectives you need to discuss in terms of uh while you take the other classes or these program non specific objectives generally gets imbibed from the faculty to the students is imbibation process people learn by seeing others people learn by seeing their seniors people learn by seeing their faculties or their gurus or people learn by seeing their parents so these are the qualities you cannot hold uh, you cannot limit to a specific topic but uh, as uh, nda says each subject have one of the other skill involved other than the program specific objectives you need there are certain uh, there are certain subjects where you need to have the knowledge almost every subject demands the knowledge of pharmaceutical ethics ethics doesn't mean it's a forensic pharmacy most of the people make a mistake with that it's a forensic pharmacy it's not like that every subject during the whole profession demands an ethics so it has to be imbibed by us to the student communication skill now this communication skill you may not say sir for communication skill how can a subject be so there should be an english no every subject one or the other way to certain extent demands some communication skill that has to be imbibed to the students uh pharmacy and the society 
environmental sustainability these we have to measure so it is totally depending upon the faculty to give the weightage of each of the program non specific objectives there is no compulsion as we know we have prepared a copo and copo mapping but that is totally relying on a faculty a faculty if he thinks no this weightage has to be increased as per his concern he can change it as per the requirement so this things uh, firstly needs a little bit of understanding and adaptation before its implementation uh here i use some thing i forgot that is i use pso that is iq and uh, pno that is uh, non specific object as eq there is a term actually in intelligence we, we use in psychology there is a term called uh, iq intelligence quotient or iq another is eq that we call it as emotional intelligence so now as per lot of psychologists they say that for a person to be successful in any field they needs a contribution of 80% of emotional intelligence and 20% of your normal iq or the knowledge so if you see somehow this remaining uh, seven or eight program non specific objectives somehow it aligns with your emotional intelligence how a student or a graduate is emotionally intelligent that will determine the extent of the success of the program non specific objectives so the below the program objectives comes individual subjects or the courses that we call it as the co we know this term that is a course objective or the subject objective so if you say each subject is this is the course objective what if you want to define it is it is a statement which is observable measurable and achievable so this is a term which we use for cos student activity that serve as evidence of knowledge skill and attitudes acquired in a course so these are the, the the things what we expect the students to do or have it and to achieve it and also we can measure it so this is the thing the term which we use it as observable measurable and achievable students activity so after doing so what it happens is it enhances the knowledge the skill and the attitude of the student for that particular subject when we are making a student to understand something we target to enhance their knowledge their skill and their attitude towards the particular subject so that is what we define as your co pos are attained through program specific core courses so to achieve this po that 12 pos at the end of your ug you need the help of individual courses or the cos generally the cos uh, which you have prepared probably uh, you know or not like it has two parts in it one we call it as the action verb so you i think uh, most of all of you do have uh, accustomed with the bloom taxonomy so if you see the bloom's taxonomy it actually deals with a verb so that's the word we call it as the action verb it is the heart of the whole co and the next one is the learning statement so a co if you take a statement it has two sections one we call it as an action verb and the action verb defines a definite learning statement bloom taxonomy is used to justify this action verb as i told co gives best fit to entire syllabus at all angles with a bird's eye view so this is a very important thing what i have seen some of the times uh, when myself and uh, uh, basu sir was uh, 
discussing lot of CEOs that has been said. It was just being copied as five CEOs means five units. It's totally wrong. Please make it a point. Five CEOs doesn't mean unit one, one CEO, unit two, one CEO, unit three, one CEO, unit four, one CEO. If you do it, that is blunder. CEOs are five. We made it five. It can be four. It can be three also. No issue. But since we maintained a decorum from last year, last NBS, we kept it as a five. The five CEOs are a bird's eye view. Hopefully you understand what you mean a bird's eye view. It's just a superficial view of whole subject. Let me give an example. Suppose if, uh, I think you know this Bloom's taxonomy, I'm not wasting time on this. And, uh, okay. So, when we say of CO, suppose let us take a subject. Uh, uh, take Samantha's pharmacology, suppose. So, pharmacology, when we are saying of pharmacology, because that is very easy, so I took that. Other subjects is very difficult. <laughs> so, firstly, uh, let us consider pharmacology as a subject. So, if you are asked to prepare a CO, you should prepare, the best CO will be the CO which will cover all the chapters of that whole subject. Like, when we are preparing the CO, it may be the first CO that is relating to the classification of the drug. Classification of a drug. Second CO, the students will learn is the mechanism of action of the drug. The third CO, it will be, the students will be learning about the adverse drug reactions and its contraindications. The fourth CO will be its uh, therapeutic uses. The fifth CO, it will be its extended application, suppose. So these are the five CEOs. Now, if you want to take this CO to a diuretic chapter, it is successful. If you take it to a cardiovascular chapter, it is successful. If you take it to another chapter, it is successful. Mostly, probably it will not be successful maybe for uh, general pharmacology. But apart from that, mostly it will cover the whole syllabus. So you, when you prepare the CEOs, the CEO should give an overview of the whole syllabus rather than section wise. If you prepare the CO section wise, it is very difficult to calculate the CO attainments, which we will come to know. So try to prepare the CO in the most simplest fashion. Don't make the things complicated. What you understand, the basic gist, put it there. And that, that will be helpful in uh, percolating the ideas to the even to the NAC auditors that we know it. So here we have made, I think this is for pharmacognosy. I think the uh, so this, uh, we have something, I'm just reading it out, just you can see it almost covers a pharmacognosy. I, if there is something wrong, you can correct me. Like firstly is to illustrate the basic plant metabolites and, and the various metabolic pathways to form secondary metabolites. Second CO is to describe the details of phytochemicals for various pharmacological use. Third CO to discover the modern extraction techniques and characterization of herbal drugs and phytoconstituents. The fourth CO is to demonstrate the isolation and identification of phytoconstituents. And the fifth CO is to ascertain the modern uh, evaluation techniques for herbal drugs. I don't know which subject it is exactly, but probably it is taken from our enlisted COs only, practically what some of our faculty has prepared. So from there I have taken. Uh, so you can see that this topic, uh, it covers almost the entire course. So that is the essence of a CO. So we should try to prepare the COs. And obviously you can see uh, tr uh, these words are being highlighted. So these are your action verbs. We should choose the action verb as per requirement. People, uh, we do have a tendency of uh, pushing the action verbs to the higher levels. If you remember, like if this is the uh, then remembering to understanding, understanding to applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating. So we have a tendency of pushing our action works to the higher levels always. Please don't do that. If it is required to remember only, <coughs> just give a remember. If it is, if it, if the course objective says it needs only understanding, use the term understanding. No need to push 
or have a jugglery of words to pu push it to the applying or analyzing to that level. No need to push it. Each subject has its own beauty and essence. So we should keep it in that fashion. So if we say that alignment of achieving the outcome based education, it's the way which I have discussed right now. It starts from your learning objective, your day to day class. It is achieved after achieving the course objective which you complete after completion of a semester when you complete a course, which is further achieved when we achieve the program outcome, the whole examination and they successfully clear or graduate from the B farm. Then we move to the employability so that with this knowledge what they have gathered as POs they can be placed in different working sectors in industries related to pharmacy which will further lead us to the vision the, our target goal through the path of mission so this is the journey of OB is a very long journey even uh, we trying to say uh, we have seen uh, the outcomes of so such journeys as right now I do have some of my students sitting as a faculty over here so they have with them I completed my outcomes program outcomes PEOs so they are in with us with the traveling in the journey of mission and vision so this is a, is a continuous process if I am there or if you are there if you are not there this triangle will be constantly moving we cannot stop this till this college exists this triangle exists So this is another. Now we are going to the technical ground. So, ma'am. So this is a bit technical ground. Technical ground. So till now, uh, hopefully the things were a little bit easier to digest. Now a little bit will increase the complexity. Like how we are going to do the CO and PO mapping. So COs. You came to know what is COs, how to prepare the COs. You also came to know that we have some 12 POs. Now, how to map the COs and POs? So, this is totally or entirely in the hands of the faculty. There is no rules or demarcations that has been given. The faculty should analyze the topic to see the course and should see to what extent all the POs, whether they are matching, to what extent they are matching, relevancy of their matching to the COs which they have prepared. There is no compulsion that all the COs should match with all the POs. So there are some uh, criteria which has been given. So we have divided the level of correlation into three uh, levels. That is, you can code it as one, that is a very low level of correlation between CO and PO. Next, moderate or medium level of correlation that is given as 2. Substantial or very high level of correlation that is given as 3. And if you find that this particular PO is not fitting with the, any uh, of the COs, you just can just give it as a no correlation by giving it as a blank. There is no compulsion that or if you are having 5 COs, that 5 COs should compile with all the POs. If you find that it is not getting compiled or uh, it is compliant, you just give a blank. If you are confused, if you are new to this subject, if you are taking, suppose for the newcomers I am saying, if you are new to this subject and if you find it little bit difficult to make a justification, you take the help of your seniors. So they can help you in justifying to what extent you can uh, take the consideration of the POs. Okay. So this is the table actually. Hopefully you have seen in the website also. This is being done. So we have prepared up to what some extent we have prepared. But that is not fixed. You can change it. If you need you can change it. It is also, always we can upgrade this. Now next is the attainment of course outcome. Let me say uh, like 
how what we are considering in our Macau system. Uh, Dhanvi sir also knows that thing. Like uh, for last uh, three years, I think sir, uh, the CA has started. Yes. Three years. So three years, the CA1, CA2, CA3, CA4, this, this pattern has started. But this pattern uh, exactly doesn't fit with the pattern of what the NDA demands. Because NDA demands an uniform style of evaluation. So if we are having CA, all the CA should be of the similar pattern. Like if you are preparing uh, subjective, objective and essay question, all the four should be the same. But you know that as per the university concern, we have three or four different variations we have to take the exam. So that cannot justify the uh, requirement of NDA if we go for individual exams. So what we have discussed, uh, I think Basusan also knows that, like we have, we are going for taking the average. So based on the average performance of the student holistically, we are giving the attainment levels. Otherwise, it is not possible to calculate in any ways this calculation. Then we have to conduct all the exams as per uh, all the same. It should be having same grading, similar type of questions. It is not possible to fulfill the demand of mark out. So that's the thing. So this is the thing we are doing. We are taking the average. And based on the average, what we are getting the marks. So those average marks are considered for the CO level attainment studies. So probably this CO attainment study I cannot fulfill today because firstly it is very humdrum and then it is very boring also. We need a separate session. So madam, if, uh, give me a second chance to discuss in details, I may go because I think uh, this session is becoming lengthy and boring from me also and from you also. Uh, we generally scold the students uh, while the classes are on. So we do feel when we sit over there, sometimes it becomes very boring. So anyhow, measuring the course outcome attained through university examinations, I just read out. Target may be stated in terms of percentage of students getting more than the university average marks or, or more as selected by the program in the final examination. So it has to be demarked. Like uh, how much should be the pass mark? If the examination uh, system is giving, okay, this should be the demarcation mark, we should follow that demarcation mark. Or else we internally, in-house we can develop, this should be the demarcation mark for the discussion. So that we'll discuss later. So for cases where the university does not provide useful indicators like average or median marks, the program may choose an attainment level on its own with justification. That has been given flexibility. This is the words from NDA only. It's not my word. Let us consider. So measuring the course outcome attained through university. So. Uh, in what ways you can say the course outcome is being attained. So if you want to give the good mark, so level one is saying at least 60% of the student is scoring more than the university percentage mark. That is at least if you say in a layman manner, at least 60% of the students should pass the exam. If minimum 60% of the student is passing the exam, I am giving them the minimum grade of one to achieve the course. CO has been achieved to the level of 1. Since only 60% students have cleared the exam, which we are following. Suppose if that percentage instead of 60%, if 70% of the students is clearing the exam, what we are uh, using as a measurable unit for probing, so we can give a much better mark that is level 2. That is we can give a marks of 2. That is it has attained the next higher level of correlation and if 80 percent or more is clearing the examination then we can say it has the co has attained to its highest level and we can give a marks of three so there's three two one so maximum we can give three so if you take an examination and uh, you have cleared and your students uh, like 90% have to, to uh, clear the examination. 
then you can say the total CO achievement is 3. You can give 3 in there. Now, if suppose in an examination which previously used to happen with my subject, that is biopharmaceutics, there was a very slow rate of passing previously, not now. <laughs> so, there if it is getting reduced, so suppose 50 percent student passed the examination. The problem that was there was the mathematics. So, 50 percent of the student passed. So, what happened if I say what is the CO level attainment? Zero. Because 60 percent didn't pass, 50 percent student passed. So, at, uh, what is the attainment level? Zero. So, hopefully, you understood the concept of this uh, marks 3, 2, 1. Sir, I'll ask you. No, you can tell, sir, because. No, doubt is that 60, 70 percent, 80 percent, that is, remark is fixed by NBA or ourselves only. No, this has been given by NBA. This part. But uh, NBA has not given us. Like what should be the least mark, pass mark. Pass mark should be the, as per the university, pass mark. Or if it is not there, like if it's a deemed university or a autonomous. So it depends on us to fix it. <coughs> so we can fix accordingly. <coughs> but as we are doing, we are following the university, probably I think so, sir. So passing mark, how many pass as per university, if it is 60%, level 1, 1 marks, if it is 70%, level 2, if it is 80% uh, and above, it is level 3. So, this is the thing, measuring CO attainment through inter... No, now there are another thing, uh, the way of taking exam, yes. I would like to one thing, I would like the CO, CO1, CO2, we have given. Now, the thing is that, this is said by India uh, committee or uh, this is said by ourselves? CEOs are said internally. Internally. Yeah. But actually in the new syllabus of the PCI, there is a, in the every subject, there is some course subject is given. Yeah, I know that. So uh, that is not relevant here. No, that is a part of our relevancy. Okay. What we have prepared, I think we but have considered those. There was not there. Yeah. In the old syllabus, this course was yeah. not given no. in the No. So. Actually, yeah. it should be there. Yeah. When a university or a PCI or any body is giving a syllabus, it is their duty to fix the objectives. <laughs> yeah. Because they are a higher authority. They are saying to teachers. So they should know better than us. But what we are doing, uh, NDA is giving a free hand relaxation that you, you can device it in much better way. The more better way you can devise, the more better way you can serve the students. So since uh, if you go through our uh, COs, which is available in our website, it is being uh, designed based on the platform of the COs, which has been given in the uh, syllabus by Macau, which is a reflection of PCI syllabus. Basus, uh, I hope so. This is a correct thing. I think a, sir has been a, 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 a what I can say the main pillar of preparing the COs. So we, myself, I was there. Basu sir was there. Uh, SK sir was there. So probably we have taken the consideration of the uh, the objective that has been given by the uh, Macaut PCI. PCI. Yes. So let us come back to the topic of. So this is the same thing. So. When we are discussing probably uh, evaluation point, we know that all our evaluation point has two sections. One is external and another is internal section. Internal section is the internal examinations that we take it. And external section is the university exams. We have two points of evaluation. So uh, here also the NBA is saying that when you are considering uh, this uh, uh, this uh, correlation, you have to take the consideration of the marks which is obtained in the internal exam as well as the marks which is obtained in the external exam. Well, for the marks in the external exam, uh, the minimum minimum pass mark has been given by the university. Probably for the internals also, I think uh, they do give any uh, lower benchmark. So I think we maintain our own internal benchmark 
so that based on that we devise that who has passed the exam who has failed the exam so like that we have two sections one is for uh, final exam university exam and internal exams these are taken we see how many students are passing in this to what extent the students are passing 60% 70% 80% internals for the same subject we see how many students are passing uh, whether it is 60 70 or 80 or ever likewise we demark them separately and then make accumulation that i am showing in the next slide so you can see over here suppose in a my subject by pharmaceutics uh, attainment through university exam if we see it was found that 80% of above students have uh, got the uh, pass mark means more than 80% students has passed the examination so i gave a marks of 3 next for internal exams they have performed little bit poor so only 70% suppose have passed the examination so for that i have given for the internal 2 okay now when we are calculating cumulative so the calculation is given at the bottom you can see we have to take the consideration if 100% is the total marks if 100% is the total marks if 100% is the total marks in nba says you divide it into two sections 70% weightage for external examination and 30% weightage for internal examination so what it will be so you gave 3 you gave 3 for external examination so that will be 70% so 70% of 3 that is 2.1 and 30% of 2 that is the internal exam you will get around 0.6 so what is the total that is 2.7 so this total uh, evaluation it's coming out of 3 only which comprises of the university as well as internal level of examination so we add it and we get it as 2.7 so this 2.7 is coming out of 3 okay any doubts because uh, as you know next uh, this is going to come to your plate only everyone sir the final level to this is the final level which one 60% students going more than 60% marks out of 11 maximum here actually we have considered 60% as the pass mark suppose we are considering 60% as the, it is an example so 60% students getting 60% or above so we are getting but below than 70% we are giving it one next next level next next level percent is the lower cut yes it is being taken over here yes so later we will be having a separate session in details i will discussing all the slides and, and along with the powerpoint it will make it much clear so last slide biggest so that statement is not clear 60% students scoring more than university average percentage so this is suppose your uh, average percentage marks to be passed or you are judging It is 40. Students, no, 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 no. It's like pass mark. Suppose 60 percent you are qualifying. Sir, but I think 40 percent yeah. is a qualifying. No, no, let it be. I'm not saying. I'm saying this is an example. No, what we did. Ah, huh, that's what I'm saying. If sub, this is an example. This has been taken from the example of NBA. They are giving it as example. Suppose 60 percent is the you are taking as the qualifying. Qualifying. So 60 percent. Forty thousand pages. How many? If it is sixty percent, then it is the lowest level. If it is the example, but what we have done. That's what I'm saying, madam. We are not going for that. This is a general discussion. That's why I told her, like, we need to have a separate discussion. It cannot be completed in a, just a miniature of one hour. It takes time.
ওকে আর ওরকম ভাবে 2.7 বেরোনো মানে ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল স্টুডেন্টের পেছনে বেরোনো না এটা বেরোনো অ্যাজ এ হোল ফর দা সিইও তুমি যেটা বের করছো व्हाट ইউ আর গেটিং ইজ ফর দা হোল গ্রুপ অফ স্টুডেন্টস ইয়েস 60% স্টুডেন্টস সাবজেক্ট 60% স্টুডেন্টস ইউ অ্যাটেন্ডমেন্ট দেখছো তো হোল সিইও অ্যাটেন্ডমেন্ট আর আমার বুঝতে দেন না মাস্টার সিইও so 2.7 means like this is for the whole bunch of class who has attained yes so their attainment is not so good or so bad it's somewhat in between so it's like 70% or 80% the majhamaji sir bolchi tar mane eta ki pura subject wise holo right subject wise 2.7 holo yes at the end of the semester yes because individually next after that we should go for a next level eto jor bolta thak na hale ajke shesh hobe na kare shesh na na shesh hoy ni ami baki ache okay so what is the thing uh, what why are we doing so these are some of the questions that might be coming to your mind right now i would like to say like why are we doing so much as a thing from uh, madam to a lot of things i am telling lot of big big boulders are dumping on your heads but the issue is why are we doing so much number 1 number 2 what does the nd and nac expect from us the second thing and the third thing what should be our goal of focus these are the primary questions probably is running in your head so if you say the answer it's the outcome based education everything we are doing from lo to vision is the outcome based education now outcome based education is not an elixir which comes in the market as a bottle you open and give it to the mouth of the students they will have it is not so is an attitude that has to be imbibed and has to be populated it has to be imbibed first by the teachers and next it has to be populated if we demand the same thing it will be a uh, nuisance that is actually happening uh, i will show you one after another so what is obe right now if you want to define the obe it is something like this you can get it we do it or we demand it there should be an our education system where we just percolate out the essential requirements of creativity discipline and intelligence both iq and eq and we have a line of graduates which is coming out this is a normal thing we are doing this is not an obe this is the most common thing nowadays in each interviews you will be coming to know who are in or close contact with the placement cell so they don't know what they should tell or should what the employer is expecting from them that's not clear so this is another big issue so this is the negative issues which we faced during this 4 5 years <coughs> when we have done nbn we are seeing or we were in close contact with outcome based education this was the situation with the students this was also not ob this is a very good comic uh, you will see most of the times in the google image uh, here it says like two boys they are saying one is saying that uh, i taught that dog how to whistle then another boy is just seeing and saying uh, i don't see that uh, that dog can whistle he said that okay i just told that i taught him he learned or not i don't know <laughs> so this is another uh, so this is generally happening actually is sad to say it's from our side and if this happens this is also not the outcome based education outcome based education if you think it's a documentation i am sorry it is not so by documentations you can give covering to certain extent but you cannot hide the bad smell which will be coming up you can cover the thing with papers with documents everything but you cannot hide the bad smell of non outcome based education that we are still that's the thing so what we do generally another issue this is a common thing we are sitting up at the top and the students are there um makout is saying you have to submit this you do this 
assignment has to be submitted. Anyhow, we don't know, you have to submit. Ultimately, what is happening? Nothing is happening. So this is also not outcome-based education. So what does OBE say is actually the definition? I think Madam gave the same definition before. Like outcome of competency-based education is a process that involves the restructuring of curriculum, assessment and reporting practice in education to reflect the achievements of high order learning and mastery rather than accumulation of course credits, which is happening right now. So hopefully we are getting the essence of what actually the OBE means of outcome-based education means. What the NBA will do actually, that have, we have done previously, they will select a full year, like batch so and so. Show me uh, what is the development from the first year till the final year. So SAR of the NBA is like that only. First year, how many pass, how many fail. Second year, how many pass, how many fail. They will start from the time when they have got the admission. So what was their uh, joint entrance rank or what was how much rank they have got. So they will be tracked for the four years. And for the final year, how many of them have got the job, how many of them has been placed, how many has gone for higher studies. So they will track the whole batch for the four years and you'll see what is the final outcome. So this is the thing they are going to evaluate. So for that, there are various uh, measuring probes like COPO, COPO correlations, COPO correlations. So these are the scales by which they will judge what is the outcome of the students. Okay. So the need for OBE, that's the thing. Globalization is one of the thing. Transmission of expert knowledge as a will, uh, what, what is required for building learner competency, including learning to learn and lifelong learning. That means focus will be on, that is skill development, competency and skill development, and prepare the global professionals for the future. These are the two main aims for OBE. So uh, the concept of OBE was first given by William Spaddy. Uh, he says, he says very good words over here, that outcome based those does not uh, sorry outcome based education or outcome based learning does not mean curriculum based with outcome sprinkle on the top what we do generally sometimes we just sprinkle the outcomes for the sake of documentation it says is a transformational way of doing business in education so this is being said by William Spaddy. He is called the father of OB. It was started in um, US first. So these are the uh, five sections of OB pyramid. Hope so. If we have some time later, we can discuss. Is OB enough for quality education? So this is a big question. So again, we can put this OB in a question mark. This is the thing which happens with us. Like we are giving efforts, faculty is giving efforts, but the students not coming up for that effort. It's just like making the horse to drink the water. There's a thing happening. So this is also a uh, the negative issue that is relevant with the OB. The real fact with the OB is generally happens with us all, which we have. I do feel it, like. We generally get students of lower ranks. Uh, now it is getting good ranks. Last two years we are getting below 30,000. But uh, in 2015 or 16, there were around ranks of uh, 70,000, 80,000. The lowest ranks of joined used to come and join the college at that time. It's just like the lower end. We try to tame the donkey to convert to a horse and make them run in the rest, uh, rest track. Fortunately, we have done it. Lot, we have done it. They are all successful. So, I do believe we can make it. It no, need not to be the creams needed to uh, make it work out. So, in this way, we are being given. So, somewhat, we face lot of challenges. This uh, private college, we face a lot of challenges. We have been given something and they have been told you prepare something gold out of it. 
so getting outcome based education from them is a challenge but i am very happy to say that most of the faculties among us they give their maximum effort and try to turn them to the thing which you see at the top another big issue is related to the ob is always the probing point is either the teachers or the principal this is the unfortunate thing nat and nb never see the probing of their parents <coughs> in a whole day if you calculate the 50% of the time is with us the remaining time they generally spend with the parents i'm saying in general so if we don't do that if that is not there the education will be shaky for a student it always does not rely on the schools or the colleges it also depends on the parents so if you want a outcome it should be from all the aspects it cannot be only blame the teachers to be not giving a uh, outcome based education from the students so some total context total context weakening the idea of striving for success by eliminating the concept of failure as a first thing greater priority to the criteria based assessment reduce importance of subject knowledge preference to skills and process caust in educational jargons alienates classroom teachers greater workload you know it is common to all greater workload for the teachers due to individual based diagnostics so these are you can say the negative aspects what we face during outcome based education this is a part of it so when we have a discussion i thought of including this so that we can have a 360 degree discussion rather than saying the good things and hiding the bad things that will not be good <clears throat> so what is the next approach they are saying it is collaborative approach for total outcome based education fusion of western obe with the eastern approach of inner engineering now maybe it may be controversial to some but it's like eastern approach emphasizes more on moral ethical and human values about the structured ob of the west you know or not uh, aict have imbibed the uh, subject of ethics and uh, human values in the course and the curriculum and also uh, mostly almost all all universities have imbibed that in their course materials also apart from that eastern approach tools like <coughs> yoga meditation kung fu tai chi taekwondo this is not in india i'm saying most of the countries in the uh, you can say in china in uh, southeast asia they imbibe the parallelly they go for imbibing these things in their learning process so we do have yoga you know so is implementation regular classes we can have it because this is the next closest thing we can have it right now uh there are some books which can be relevant or irrelevant or to certain extent be beneficial to the students i don't think everything is there like i i i i just or just this is the last slide of my discussion hopefully i completed all my thing uh, it's a four o'clock sir madam so i have uh, saved lot of time so these are some of the books uh, i'm not saying you should read this books <laughs> these are books which i read or i am reading uh, this can be to a certain extent beneficial if you share the informations what you have with your students because see uh, now in this age of globalization the knowledge what we said Uh, five years, ten years back, has turned into a data. Students have their mobile; they just click the mobile, and now is this? They are not even clicking the mobile. They speak on the mobile. They get all the informations. If they know the relevant sources, they will get it. The varying, the only thing they miss is the varying those informations. So there, the teachers can help. So how to var this varying? if teachers shows interest that will be beneficial from the either side uh these are some of the books uh, i do believe can be helpful for us as well as for the students 
if and uh, if we can get some of the there are much much more other books if we can get them in our library also you know even our students will also be benefited out of it so this is what conclusion we have understood the essence of ob as accurate for accreditation process also we discuss about its true status and uh, this is i think controversial point we can eastern approach some of the people don't like it i just say a multiple approach should be taken so that we can achieve the ob by hook or by crook that's the thing so that's all thank you so thank you reza sir for the conduction of the delivery of the speech and uh, one thing i will want to add is that for the mission and vision why we have just uh, heard from him the details and the modified version of mission and vision the uh, nda has taken one step forward that they are saying how you are percolating this mission and vision uh, to amongst your students so in many colleges uh, auditors come and ask the students can you tell me the mission and vision of your institute so uh, we have taken one step forward also apart from the uh, installation of hoardings in the corridors we are uh, pasting that mission vision and po in the laboratory notebooks so it has already been circulated among the students they are pasting that mission vision po in their notebooks so it is a request to all the faculty members who are taking the laboratory classes please uh, try to teach what is mission vision and po and uh, ask them from time to time what they actually mean from the, uh, that part because it is a big lengthy portion na it's not possible for the students to tell all those things so just summarize the things and just convey the main meaning of the mission and vision to the students so that the stu that information can be percolated to them and students can repart uh, and answer the questions to the auditor so the one step forward we have gone for pasting all the mission mission to the laboratory notebook so it is a request to the students uh, to the faculty members to please teach the mission mission in the laboratory classes in the practical classes so that will be that become helpful to them also so with this we have completed today's session and now for the evaluation system so we i am distributing the question paper don't get nervous 